The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, and Advice Show for the Modern Era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. Uh, let me check my documents here. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. What's up? It's Griffin. What's up, Griffin? We've got another film watch. Uh, one of our great series where we pick a popcorn flick coming out that week and pretend as though we are very excited for it and that we've seen it or will see it. And this week, our uh, the funny one we got is They Shall Not Grow Old. <laughs> you guys ready for some fucking gags? Oh. They Shall Not Grow Old. Watch. Peter Jackson has taken a bunch of dope-ass footage from World War One and given it that, put Jar Jar in it, <laughs> cleaned it up, cleaned it up, put Jar Jar in it, colorized it, smoothed it out, sexied it up. Crunchitized it. Now, now, Justin photoshopped away all of the old man wrinkles. So Put a bunch, a bunch of Instagram filters on it. It's just a bunch of sexy ass Chris Helmsworth walking around. Now, Justin, I of course know everything about this film. Uh, I studied up for the watch. But for those at home that may be wondering, is this like, is there like a storyline? It's or like is- it's a it's an homage to British troops in the First World War with a, a bunch of footage that he has like remastered uh, with. Uh, overlaid with a narrative of those who partook in the war from interviews made in the 60s and 70s. So what is right. a, what's uncomfortable is they can't. It's like Super Bowl. They can't actually say World War One, so they mm-hmm. call it the big fight throughout the <laughs> <Yeah>. whole movie. <laughs> the first big fight. <laughs> yeah, the huge skirmish. I think that this. If you have okay, if you've seen this footage, it is amazing what uh, Pete has done. He's taken this like really old grainy footage and made it feel so real. Uh, which uh, is is extremely impressive. The reviews are in on this one, and it is, I just, it's an amazing achievement that Peter Jackson has done, and the critics are all uniformly lining up to hail this outstanding, amazing achievement. But you know there's still one who's mm. like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Where's I've, the superheroes? I've seen some other movies, and of them... <laughs> Never before seen World War One footage digitally remastered for modern audiences. This one left me feeling a little cold. So I guess the thing that's on everybody's tongues is what's what else can Peter put his magic touch on and remaster? What uh, maybe just wars, or maybe there's other stuff. It seems like war he's got pretty much figured out at this point, so maybe it's cheaper for him to do wars. Uh-huh. I, I have some footage of me making a sandwich a couple of years ago, but I I didn't make it interesting. I forgot to make it interesting, if I'm being honest. The sandwich and, or the footage? I mean, both, honestly. I would like Peter Jackson to remaster my sandwich. I'd like to see him take a pass at the War of the Roses, but not the actual one, mm-hmm. the, Ka- the Kathleen Turner film. Oh, yeah, I, punch it up. Punch up that Kathleen Turner, Michael Douglas classic. Punch it. This guy can do anything, mm. right? Pete can take a whole war and make it feel like one movie. Mm. He can take 50,000 orcs and make them feel like one army. What I would like him to do is dip into the series Supernatural, which has just crested 300 episodes. Uh-huh. And I would love him to just bring it on in for <laughs> What I want Pete to do, now that he's finished his World War One film documentary, I want yeah. him to just take all 300 episodes of Supernatural and just fucking bring it in so I can get caught up on this series, see what all the fuss is about, so, 
every other issue of Entertainment Weekly has it on the cover. I just want to get in on the hubbub, the fandom, the tumbling of this show, and I can't because there's 300 episodes, and I will be dead by the time no. that I watch all those back-to-back. So I just need Pete to bring it in. To bring it on Jay, home. man, I'm going to do some quick math here, and let's assume that with commercial breaks, there's 45 minutes of actual Supernatural in each episode, and you're saying 300. So that's 13,500 minutes. Wouldn't it be amazing? Thirteen thousand. If Michael, if 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 who's Michael? <laughs> if Peter Jackson could. Who's Michael though? I don't know. Where did if, Michael come from? I was thinking of Michael Jackson. If Peter Jackson, it's two hundred twenty-five hours of Supernatural. Right. So much. Or so much show. Or nine point three. In nine one and third, hour. Nine and a third days of Supernatural. Mm. In one hour, he would have to squeeze. 225 minutes into each minute yeah. of an hour long episode to get you caught up. Math so is you, fun. I think that. Thank you, Griffin. I um, agree. I Morning. think that. Can you even imagine? He did the whole war, I guess, in one flick. Uh huh. But The Hobbit, a 300 page long book, did take three flicks. That's kind of a fart in the face to people who did World War One, huh? <laughs> think so because well, if they something. could come back and watch one of the three hobbit movies where it's like here's a 30 minute section on the kind of grass that hobbits eat or whatever <laughs> and they're like wow that's cool my whole thing got blown up but i guess that one got <laughs> cut for time pete <laughs> cut my cut my whole place getting blown up for time i guess i think that there is um and I think this one is just coming out for one day in a limited release situation, an event release, if you will. What a hot watch we're doing! Oh, yeah, this is a hot watch. February one, I think, is the one is the time that you can see this one uh, out. Cool, man. Yeah, man. Great. Cool. Go see this flick. Let us know. Well, I mean, let Rotten Tomatoes know what you think, and we'll definitely see it that way. Um. We are an advice program, right? So we take questions from you, our beloved audience. You can send those to mbmbam at maximumfun.org. And send us your questions. Let us know how we can help. If you need real, actual advice, not pretend advice, or you just want to tell us a story, anything like that. If you need actual advice, let us help you. Let us, that's our core competency, really, when all is said and done. And that's going to do it for us this that's week. That's it for so. our episode. A lot of just sort of talking in this one. <laughs> I yeah. feel like. But, but we you know what? Thank you hey, wait, let me get a hand on the talking ball. We never uh, let me know. Listen, address. I want to talk. I want to talk. I just got a Google Calendar notification pop up that Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out tomorrow. <gasps> and what? I can't believe it's actually here, folks. And I heard in this one, Mickey Mouse actually kills Sephiroth. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't we do a watch on that? Why did we pick the hard one about the war that we have don't know much about and have to really kind of like watch what we say? We could have we could have talked about art. It's because you're so very excited for it, huh? Oh, I just can't wait to watch Mickey Mouse fight. Do you think <laughs> this one, Mickey Mouse? Do you fights. think when they're getting ready to make a new Kingdom Hearts game, they just do a deep dive on like Disney fan fiction and steal a bunch of ideas? <laughs> They've stolen a lot of my uh, Wreck It Ralph fan fiction. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have one where his fists <laughs> grow to the sides of buildings, and they're so big and sweaty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't do anything with them, and they drag him around. And um, Elsa and Moana and uh, Flint Rider from in- uh, Tangled have to come help him carry his fists, and his, p- <laughs> and his pants get caught. Uh-huh. His stupid overalls get caught on a rock and they tear off. Yeah. And so they're dragging him by his huge fists. And that is in Kingdom Hearts 3. I saw in a trailer. So I'm not going Yeah, it, Kingdom Hearts 3 does have Wreck It Ralph with his huge <laughs> fists. And he teams up with Master Chief for an Ultima summon. And his pants rip off, I his guess. His pants rip off. And his... <laughs> but it's not a dress. It's not, but he doesn't. Listen, it's not a sexual thing. Yeah. It's, it's just junk. it's just a funny thing that happens. And his gym jam's all pixelated, and Master Chief's like, What's oh, I guess they're censoring your gym jam? And Wreck-It oh, Ralph's so sorry. Like, and Wreck It Ralph's just like, No, that's what it looks like in a <gasps> video game. And so, Master Chief then just says a quiet prayer. And he's very Christ. religious in this one. There's and, a lot of praying to Christ. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole Christ <laughs> narrative in this one. Yeah. One of the movies that they like make a world out of is the Bible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Yeah, the Disney movie, The Bible. It's sort of 
of fully get saved. Let's do some questions. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Finally, <Chief>. Mickey converts. <laughs> Master Chief takes off his helmet. He says, finally, I can reveal my identity. It's Jack Sparrow. Ah, the whole time it's been Jack see? Sparrow underneath Whoa. the helmet. And then Man, he becomes was, a Christian, too. This would have been a way... <laughs> this would have been a way better intro. It's a shame we didn't see, do this one. the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 Then Tron comes out. He's doing all these crazy stunts. <laughs> and when the camera pulls back, he's smelled out with his light cycle. John 316. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tron loves Jesus, too. Even cyber Jesus, of course, but... All right. All right. right. So every... Here comes the question. At the end of Kingdom the... Hearts, they all get saved. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, pull it back in. Pull it back in. Oh, we were almost there. We were so it. close to doing our podcast that we Here do. Here comes the week. podcast. You've Let's been see. Then for. I pictured Lightning McQueen getting baptized. <laughs> we can't. We can't. It's just a car, but it's a car wash. We can't. We can't. We can't. Go. Read the first question. Go. Come on. No, we can't do this. I can't we do can't it. Do that. No, we can't do this. The chicken for Moana says Jesus. Okay. All right. So we're done. We're okay. done. That's it. That's it. He swallows a Bible whole and he gets choked on it. All right. Here comes That's the first. He does Jesus go to heaven. heaven. He does go to heaven. Hey, hey. Voiced by Alan Tudyk. For the last morning. year or so, I've been working in the mall as a retail assistant. Throughout, I don't like the feeling of doing one of these questions. I don't like reading questions. Come on, nephew. You, by, you feel froggy? Do it, baby. You started. I'm, it's just reading a question written by a sensible human being is uh, weird to me. For the last year or so, I've been working in a mall as a retail assistant. Throughout my time working there, I have gotten to know quite a few of the people who also work in the mall. A few weeks ago, a girl who works at the Mexican restaurant. The Justin, come on! In the you're mall, so you're there, I'm you're fine. Here. And the mall came to introduce herself. She told me her name, and that I should quote drop by sometime, and she will give me some, give me half price burritos. I have now happily d- done on se- so on several occasions. I just thought this is a friendly thing to do, but my coworkers met her before, and they have never been offered any discount. Some of my coworkers now think she is into me. This wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that I have been happily part of her relationship for the past four years, and we've recently gotten engaged. My question is, is it okay for me to keep this burrito agreement and not tell this girl I'm engaged as long as she doesn't ask? That's from Question Quesadilla. This is a heavy one to start out with. What a tonal shift from Sora getting saved by Jesus Christ to <laughs> this temp- tempted by the burrito of another sort of situation. Uh, I feel like swing on by for half price burritos is a weird game. Is some weird game maybe? And I don't know. I think, I think if if you have something as powerful as half price burritos to offer, I feel like that's a big old power move because it almost ensures like I'm gonna see this person again. Well, also it shows I can provide for you. Yes. Burritos, which is, which is important. My love language is half of the money that I would have to spend on burritos just being saved in my back pocket. This is a tricky one because the, there's so many ways it can play out. Number one, they're they're not actually into you; they're just being friendly. And also, what store do you work at? That's it. Maybe they're trying to get half price iPhone. Mm. Ooh, they're trying to get a reciprocal deal. That's entirely but, possible. See, but the element of this question that is kind of a, a, a like breaks the whole thing wide open is that none of the question askers coworkers have been offered the same deal. You yeah. know what I mean? So like this is unique to them. But right. maybe maybe it's just all your other coworkers are drips and you're awesome and yeah. the person's like I want to hang out with this person more and become friends and it's oh, here's what you need to do. Okay. Bring your fiance with you. This is not good. That's not good. What? Um, I think uh, what the only other option, is, like if you feel bad, is to say like, "Hey, I appreciate the half price burritos, but you should know I'm in a relationship." No, and that's like the worst thing I can. No, think of. but here's the problem. There's there's a very different version of this question that we could get. That's like, "Hey, I've been trying to hit on this guy with some low price Mexican cuisine." 
and he just brought in his f- fiance. Do I have to keep giving him these mm, great yeah. burritos? Damn, you're right. Um, I'm also assuming the gender of the question asker, which I I shouldn't do. Cause I, we have no idea. But sure, whoever it is, they I I feel like that's not. Here's the thing: if you're getting half price burritos, folks, the half of the price has to come from somewhere, and yeah, yeah. maybe it's coming from this employee. Maybe it's coming from Mr. Bell. I don't know. But it's coming from somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Cadoba. Somewhere along the chain, a piper is not getting paid. And yeah. I think that you could do that a couple times and feel okay about it. It's not a permanent solution, though. I don't think you could do that permanently. I don't feel great about that. I feel like somebody, eventually the game's going to get got. And uh, if you're just in it for the free burritos uh, and not the camaraderie or yes. the companionship, I feel like maybe it's time to let this particular hookup Slide on by unless you can reciprocate with a and you start of bringing them burritos. You start bringing them a half of a burrito, Travis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from a different, the- a different, better place. And then you glue it to the burrito they gave you, and you hand it back. And, and that's good as and new. that's how they that's how they. I know. got this at a Cordoba, and I know you're probably not legally allowed to go into Cordoba. So here's a Cordoba bur- burrito. I like how you say that. What Cordoba? How would you say it? I don't know. I've just never said it out loud Fuck because I've been afraid tries. of doing it wrong. <laughs> well, I have. I live with no fear. I I do not have any limits. It's 2019. I'm becoming yeah. a monster. Let the big dog eat. If um, Travis, if Travis actually says Kadoba out loud, he loses his powers. I can't. I that's can't why I'm say always Kadoba out. Oh no! Oh, my tricks have finally paid off. How about a Yahoo? I wanted pivot. Okay. Yeah. You're the uh, only, the power is in your hands. Here's a Yahoo. This one was sent in by Emily Shock. Thanks, Emily. It's uh, Yahoo Answers user FN two one eight seven, which I believe is the Star Wars guy. Wait. When did the first Star Wars movie come out? The I mean the the I guess seventh one come out. That was when that was fairly recent. That was while I was living in Austin. I think it was like 2014, 2015, something like that. FN2187, which is the name of the Star Wars guy, has been a member since May 7th, 2007. So they just happened to I'm guessing the Star Wars stole their shit from this Yahoo Answers user. Whoa. Or they changed their username. No, so they ask, my dreams be having 10 to 30 second commercials. Is this mm-hmm. normal? Yes. No lie. I can't make things like this up. You could. I, yeah. normally, I normally don't remember my dreams, but when this happens, it helps me remember them. Y'all ever have sort of like, you're enjoying a dream. You're, f- you know, flying a... Uh, you know, a jumbo jet with Richard Dreyfus, mm-hmm. and suddenly he turns into a piranha plant from Mario, and then all of a sudden you're fully erect, and you're like, "What is this gonna?" And then it's just like, you know, you get to you watch the the like Gillette commercial, the, the no, one everybody's talking I'll, about. All the advertising in my dreams is native advertising. Like it happens in the like I would be flying with oh, Richard Dreyfus. I love and, that. Yeah, Mario would show up and. Then he would pull out a Gillette razor and start shaving his mustache and talking about how smooth a shave it is and how it's making him a better person and not a jerk all the time. Yeah, sure. Uh, we do uh, co-branded campaigns. So oh. it is original content. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, it just is like sponsored by Chevrolet. And it's like, oh, that's nice. And it's not about the product, right? Like the car might be in it for like a second, mm-hmm. but really. It's more about like I'm driving uh, like a a car and I'm naked and my teeth fall out and Mm. then the car explodes and then I'm a lizard and then I can fly and then at the end it's like sponsored by Chevrolet. Yeah. Don't you guys think, isn't the weirdest part of a dream always where like you get to the end of the story in the dream but you're not awake yet so then everybody in the dream just kind of stands around kind of like hands in pockets and it goes on for like a long time until they look at you and say, wake up, please, we're really bored and then you wake up but you're still in the dream brought to you by Chevrolet. Yeah, the problem is when you take one of the commercial pills that implants it in your mind so mm-hmm. that you can see it when you dream. That Morpheus is, gives you. That Morpheus gives you. It's hard to flush those out sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you get them. St- I, I'm still getting commercials for the Firefest. I'm still getting oh, those no. in there. So I'll be having a dream where me and Robert Loja are uh, having a huge fist fight on the moon. And then all of a sudden, Ja Rule pops up. 
And I'm I'm like awake enough to say like, Ja, you got to get out of there, bud. You got to get out of there, bud. Bud, it's not going to happen for you this time. You need to go. But every time it still goes and he still does it. Ah, shoot. You know, here's the thing that's really fucking me up is. Whoa. I Whoa, bought. God, come on. Jeez. What? 10, 13 in the morning, Trav. You're you got to right. watch that's the yeah, language. You're, you're, it's you're dropping... to curse. I bought ads in my own dream for my, and this was early days, early days of my brother, my brother and me, just to try to get some buzz going. And so now I'm right now having a hard time telling if this is a dream that I'm dreaming with an ad for my own podcast in it or if I'm actually sitting here recording. Yeah. Don't try to fucking freak my bean, dude, because it's early and it'll work. And I can't have that kind of schism. I'm not trying to freak, freak your bean. I'm living in my own bean freak and you're just here for the ride. You know what I mean? Wow. Whoa. I have this occasional part-time job as kind of a secret shopper where I go to restaurants, gas stations, and they're like, okay, I'm going to stop real quick. If you say my job is, quote, kind of a secret shopper, I assume you, you are a thief. Or yeah. a, oh, I see. a murderer. <laughs> like, I, that's a, <laughs> the most suspicious, suspicious intro possible. Okay. I have the occasional part time job as kind of a secret shopper where I go to restaurants, gas stations, and the like, and attempt to buy alcohol <laughs> or cigarettes and test that the cashier slash server checks for ID. I cannot get over, Justin, how you have made me realize how much secret shopper sounds like a euphemism for a shoplifter. Yes, Like, for I sure. shop in secret. <laughs> no Occasional part-time shop. secret shopper sounds like you're a shoplifter, 100%. <laughs> I'm 23, but I look 17, so most of the time the employee passes this weird test. I'm not given a script or anything, but the goal is to appear to be somewhat normal shopper slash diner. Recently, I've been tasked with attempting to buy vapes. I don't vape or have friends who vape, so I don't really how to ask a cashier for a vape without sounding completely unbelievable. Brothers, how does one try to buy a vape without sounding like a cop? And that's from Vexed about vapes in Chicago. One vape, please. Vape, yeah, vape me. I Vape me up. I'm just now remembering, I just had a very vivid memory of being in high school and another friend trying to recruit me into one of these programs. Ooh. Like to be an undercover narc, right? Where they like send teenagers in to buy cigarettes. And if they let them, then the place gets in trouble. It's only now occurring to me that this thing where it's a real adult pretending to be underage makes a lot more sense from sort of a legal yeah. perspective than sending 16 year old narcs in to buy smokes. But also, though, to that point, J Man. Selling cigarettes or vapes to a twenty-three-year-old is in no way illegal. Now I get that you're supposed to check, like, check IDs if they look under thirty-five, which is bonkers. But like that idea of like, whoa, you're in trouble because that could have been a teen. It's like, yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, but like my thing was entrapment, <laughs> so That's I fair. can yeah. see where that would and be you, a problem. <laughs> and you did slink around in those leather pants to buy those. And I had a, so a stippled on uh, a beard that was, <laughs> I thought was convincing, but. Uh, I um I had to deal with this while working at GameStop because uh, pretty close to the end of my tenure with that great company, uh, they instituted a policy where you did have to like ID people if they were trying to buy a mature rated game um, because, you know, an 18 year old who comes in to buy Call of Duty 9 for sure is going to have their ID on them. They're sh they are for sure, they do know how to drive a car and they're very good at it. Uh, and every time that someone would come up and buy a mature rated game, I would assume they were a secret shopper, mm. which never worked because I never actually got one. But if I had, boy, would they have been flummoxed. I would be like, oh, want to buy this mature blood game, huh? <laughs> gotcha. I, uh, I, okay, so it, it depends. Part of this is like, if you're going into a vape shop proper or you're going into Speedway yeah, to just buy a vape, because those, they don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, you could wander in there and say like, I need, I don't know, a vape. And they're not going to have the sort of expertise <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. expertise Come. to guide you to the proper vaping experience. As If you're at a vape shop proper, mm. I think that that becomes a lot harder. I think that because you're not going to know 
you know, the terms and all the slang. So mm. as I understand it from my years in the game, you go in, you say, I need to, okay, here's the thing. I got it. I got you. Right. I got a solution. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Here's the solution. You don't go in equipment focused or slang focus or juice focus. You go in outcome focus. Okay. Ooh. You go in and say, I'm going to, I want to crank so much cotton that my mom has to leave the room. Yeah. And yeah. I want to and then and then reverse engineer. Yes, exactly. Here's my end goal is I want to crank some serious fucking dragon's breath, my man. And yeah. I don't know how to achieve that. And I want it to also have nicotine for sure, you know, the yeah. illegal stuff. So please I that's my outcome. That's my solution. Now, I need you to get focused on the steps we take to get there vis-a-vis equipment and technology and implants, whatever it takes. Yeah, because it's like building a lightsaber, right? You're like you're going to go through every <laughs> step with them. <laughs> and that's how you're going to master it. That's right? it. And I guarantee someone working at a vape shop and that's like their job is going to be super excited to have some kind of like goal that they're chasing and not just like give me. I, I imagine there's going to be a vape. lot of like steepling of the fingers and hmm let me just mm. uh uh do you like um cinnamon <laughs> we've gotten some new carbides from vienna <laughs> all right and then they like roll out like kind of a jeweler's mat you know I'm sorry, I'm just so obsessed with this idea of your vape rig having to be like your lightsaber that you put together and choosing the the, the kyber crystal that goes mm-hmm. inside of it. And it, you have to make, I feel like everybody should have to make their own vape rig. I don't yes. think you should be able to buy them. I think it should, There. This is this is my vape rig. There are many like them, but this one is mine. It's how you learn the responsibility. You know what yes. I mean? Like, yes, that I, I shape this with my will. I was I was thinking about vapes that look like other things because I'm sure someone has made like a huge lightsaber vape. The ones I've seen oh, on yeah. the street all look like lightsabers anyway. So I typed in sonic screwdriver and I'm very upset with Google and what Google thinks of me because the autocomplete from sonic screwdriver is sonic screwdriver vape. Ah. And so like Google has my fucking number in a major way. Oh, uh, no. You could have poking out of your shirt pocket a ticket for an R-rated movie. Uh-huh. And so you can walk in and be like, I would like to buy a vape. And they're like, wait a minute, how? And then they'll look in your pocket and what's that say? Fatal attraction. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you must be 40 years old. <laughs> if you have a fatal attraction ticket, you're good to go. Or maybe just walk in with like holding a baby. Mm. And then you're like, I would like to buy a vape. And they're like, well... I don't have fly. a baby with them. Hur- hurry, hurry it up. Me and this baby have to go see <laughs> Fatal Attraction. <laughs> and then I've got to pay my taxes. My taxes I have as an adult. Um, I Car don't... insurance, am I right? I think you can't bring a baby into a vape shop. I'm not. I'm going to re- revoke that advice. I don't think <laughs> you, you poke, can. You no, no, no. Head, the baby's 26. Say, can you guys not vape just for like a little bit? Just like clear it out in here? <laughs> <laughs> Can everyone stop? The baby? baby's a cop too. Yeah, this and it is a, a baby, but it's trained for this shit. It only exhales. <laughs> this baby's getting too old for this shit because he's four and he's pretending to be a vape baby, a vape bait baby. <laughs> I bring it to vape shops to see if they let me have a baby in here. You've been busted. This is my baby. <laughs> this is my bait baby vapester. <laughs> bring vapester into vape shops and see if they make me take the vape my bait my vape bait baby out. <laughs> Vape, 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 baby. And the if it's legal to have a baby in a vape shop. So if the vape shop doesn't throw you out with the baby, then they're busted. They're, that's a double yep. illegal crime. Well, let's not throw the vape fog out with the baby water. Should we go to the money zone? <laughs> We're already there. Look around you. I built it when you weren't looking. <laughs> now I'm bricking over the entrance. <laughs> So you're trapped here forever. <laughs> oh no, I've been I've been cask of a mambo a monologue. No, a you had it right, Ferris. It's cask of a mambo number five a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Hey, I want to tell y'all about me undies because uh Hard Valentine's pass. Day. What? Hard pass. Why? I don't want to know about your undies. 
Oh, I see. I, um, oh, this is a silly episode. It was fun. Yeah, we're having fun not getting the things done that we got to get done in this one contractually. But MeUndies is great for Valentine's Day uh, because they're, first of all, quality underwear. They're made out of micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton. And you can choose from uh, four different cuts of underwear. There's the prime cut. Uh, the there's the the flank. Uh, you can get a porterhouse underwear, uh, all of which are available. From, Mine's from, a T-bone. Yeah, from classic. Colors. Ew, oh, gross. Travis. Travis. Yeah. That was a finger. It was a Santa stinker. stinker. Yikes. Oh, okay. And it's got adventurous prints. Uh, I have, uh, I recently Marie Kondoed my whole like uh, wardrobe. And so now, like, I am happy to say that pretty much all the underwear I own is MeUndies, and that's great. And for uh, Christmas, Rachel got me a MeUndies onesie that um, when I was in town in Huntington mm-hmm. uh, for the holidays, uh, you could not get me out of. It's and true. I'm. Uh, yeah, so Valentine's Day, it's a great gift. Uh, and they have lounge pants as well. So MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. If you want to get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash my brother. That's MeUndies.com slash my brother, all one word. I would like to tell you about Stitch Fix. Do it, Howard. Um, I don't know if, who was at, I don't know who was at PodCon, and I don't know who's seen pictures oh, of PodCon. Oh, shit. But I got this sweater. Well, one, okay, everything in like the getting ready room for all the podcasters. Everybody. Everybody. I think Hank and I were wearing the same pants at one I point. I fucking cause... ran, I ran into Hank at the airport wearing the sweater that I saw him wear. I, I packed the sweater that I saw him wearing during like the opening ceremony and I, I had it. It was my only clean shirt left on the day I was traveling home and it's like, oh, it's fine. I won't see Hank. I saw him in the fucking airport line. But basically so... anyone who has tried such tricks is like, into it yes um i got this sweater that i wore at podcon that had like a blue bowl on it and like non that was a stitch fix yeah damn that's a good sweater i Very know good. non-stop like people are like great sweater great sweater great sweater and that's the thing is if you're looking to up your game stitch fix is the way to do it because they don't just send you stuff like they talk to you they ask you questions they say what do you like do you like this and they also ask you and this is my favorite thing price ranges that you're comfortable spending on clothes because the, i know like I don't want a $200 t-shirt. Like, me and Macklemore both agree that's ridiculous. And so you would say, like, I don't want to pay more than blank for a t-shirt. So they tailor not only the style, but the prices to you as well. And you work with a personal stylist who will handpick those items for you. And then if you don't like something, you send it back and you don't have to pay for it. And that also helps them shape your profile so that the next time it's even more accurate. How it's, do I get this box? How oh, do I get this wonderful thank box? Thank you so much for asking, Griffin. You go to stitchfix.com slash my brother, and you can get started now, and you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash my brother. Hello, this is Amy Mann. And I'm Ted Leo. And we have a podcast called The Art of Process. We're talking about how the creative process is in itself an art form, in our opinion. There are underlying forms and structures that serve as a scaffolding for any creative endeavor. We've been lucky enough over the past year to talk to some of our friends and acquaintances from across the creative spectrum to find out how they actually work. We weirdly don't know as many musicians as you would expect. New episodes will be coming every other Monday. Starting January 28th. So please... Please listen and subscribe at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast. Do y'all want a Yahoo? I would love that, Griffin. It's uh, sent in by Sid Ross. It's Yahoo Answers user, shh, who asks, can a locksmith break into every door? Mm. Mm. This one I wanted to talk about because... <laughs> okay. I would hope. A lot... A locksmith can just kind of get in there. A locksmith motto could be, we just get in there. When you can't get in there and you need to and it's yours, the locksmith will be there for you. That seems wild to me that there's a career, a profession in there. There's probably a career out there called lockmaker. 
Mm-hmm. And then there's an evil sort of in. I'm not saying all locksmiths are evil, but I'm saying if they could be, you know how they don't trust the X Men because of their mutant powers yes. and they could do infinite evil with it. Yes. I'm just saying I don't know why we're sort of allowing locksmiths to be to be so <laughs> footloose and fancy free with their stuff. I don't know. I'm sitting here trying to think of another profession that is so closely related to like burglaring. <laughs> You know, like there is not another, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm a wall scaler. Yeah. Like, I, if you need me to scale, well, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a professional guy who cuts holes in skylights. <laughs> you, like, yeah. <laughs> I've, if you've ever like locked your keys in your, in your home and then had to call locksmith to come help you out, I think that it is, it is a universal human experience to watch someone break into your door in 20 seconds ago. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Hey, yeah. Okay. Huh. Locksmith, if you can at least pretend like it's a challenge and sit there and be like, well, this is the toughest lock I've ever seen. Something like that just to make me feel like, oh, this is going to take me at least an hour and a half, giving you plenty of time to call the police if you needed to. But you don't. <laughs> this it's like pain. Pain. this lock requires an extremely loud drill. <laughs> a rare tool that only I own and will melt down after I'm done over. Here, I'm going to leave this with you. <laughs> <laughs> only, only I know how to unlock this door. Now kill me. <laughs> You get to, that'll be $150. Good. Now kill me. <laughs> that'll be, kill me. That's the only way you're saying That'll be $150 for lock. another 50 You can clip out my tongue with these hedge trimmers. Uh, now there's... drive this ice pick up my nose. Nope. A little to the left. Got it. That's good. There he goes. It's just <laughs> right. Me. Now that you think about it, right? There's this. It's like paying somebody to point a knife at you, and it's like they, I don't know why. I don't know what. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be locksmiths, and I'm not saying that all locksmiths are using their powers. For probably people. most I'm aren't. Just, That's probably a pretty good way. To, yeah, I guess to lose. most locksmiths are not. Yes, but I mean, right? It, right? There, they, I'm, there needs to be there needs to be a checks and balances system. Do you think they like show up for like monthly meetings of like a locksmith union or stuff, and they're like, "What? Where's Debbie?" And it's like, "Oh, she went rogue." Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, she went Debbie's to Debbie's a rogue side. nation now. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to hunt her and bring her in so that she doesn't give other locksmiths a bad name. But she's in a house behind eleven locked doors. Oh no. Are you guys tough enough for this challenge? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, just saying. Yeah. So anyway, let's keep an eye out. Uh, become the monster, but like still be be be. You know, just keep an eye on locksmiths. Do you think that every locksmith owns in their possession a small locked box that they cannot open, and if they do, they die? Mm, the paradox lock. <laughs> uh, mm, God, make because they want to open because it's a challenge, right? Like. They mm. they love doing, they love picking locks, and it's like, yeah. hey, here's a lock that's unique to you. No one else has ever picked this lock before. Yeah, but I'm... if you open it, you die. Well, there's the pandemonium cube, and yeah. yes, locksmith obviously. locksmith Reddit is always blowing up about the pandemonium <laughs> cube because somebody's like <laughs> Debbie shows up and he's Debbie's like, I think I got it, I think I got it, and then she tries to pick it, and then she of course gets turned into a skeleton because yes. she didn't, she forgot to turn that one sort of. A uh, bust of and, the devil. And there's also the million fasted crystal of Akimara that a lot yes. of people, uh, of course, you need a lot of souls to unlock that. And uh, that one's tricky. Sunlight. And some people will eclipse. tell you they're connected and you need one to unlock mm, the other. Or you vice don't. I don't know. No. I mean, we can talk about it in the forums all day. You know what I mean? But when it comes down to it, I guess I'm just afraid of the power of the locksmith that opens it. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And what they might become. Especially because they will definitely need to be in possession of Igalacia's screaming blade. And yeah. I feel like that is what really trips me out. And yeah. the one hundred, the one hundred wishes you get from the pandemonium cube just seems excessive seems because you're gonna like, you're gonna change everything. It seems that. like that amount of wishes is designed to make you lose track of how many you have left. Yeah, it's not right? as though there's a counter on there. Dun, 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 well, dun, there might go. there might be. Nobody's been inside the pandemonium cube. There might be a little <laughs> like L. Well, it's not necessarily true, Griffin, because I have heard voices from inside the pandemonium cube whispering to me the lock combination and. That's a trick. trick. That's a trick. They want to turn you into bones, Trav. That's a trick. That's an well, old trick. You should. You know fucking you know better, better than that. that. What? Da, 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 da. 
This is what the voice sounds like. I want to munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. It's a little sad this year for Valentine's Day that because of the Neko company going out of business, we're not going to have the conversation hearts just like. What? Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, bud, Neko's out of business, and there's no uh, candy hearts. It seems wild that someone hasn't like swooped in and just like uh, swooped in and 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 and, and inherited that incredibly successful business plan of making yucky chalk candy that got them closed down. They have been bought. They're or they're like the the Neko company has been bought by the people who make. Um, uh, 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 chalk. No, the uh, dumb, dumb people. So, but they didn't have time to make the new ones this year. So there is a gap, right? And right. anywhere there's a gap in culture, you can count on one company uh, that's always one K away from disaster. It's Krispy Kreme, and they're introducing a line of Valentine's conversation heart donuts. Ooh. Um, and they are basically just doing the thing that they're not sure if anyone could sue them is what I would guess. Currently, they're not (laughs) sure who would sue them, so they're just going to go ahead and do it. And it's just donuts that look like those, except they're very big, and they have phrases like, I heart you, or pick me, or all the feels. (sighs) Oh, yeah! Hachi machi, folks. Hey, folks, this is for me to you. Real quick (laughs) sidebar. Emotions are the thing that um, make life worth living and separate us from sort of the the animals and refrigerators and all the other things that aren't people. Can we not reduce the entire human experience to the word feels? Can we just be sad or happy or horny for donuts or whatever it may be? Anyway, so these are giant conversational hearts that say things, and they also say DM me on them, so fuck it. I guess. Fuck it, anything goes. They got cl- Why do they want you to play Dungeons and Dragons with they them? They got Hachi Machi. They got four classic Krispy Kreme fillings. That classic is spelled with the C. Do not All fret. Right. Uh, cake batter, strawberries and cream, raspberry filled, and chocolate cream. Mystery. Mystery. <laughs> Power. Um, finding <laughs> loose flour. <laughs> <laughs> spare change. Find, find the right word can be like I don't know, hard. And there's a four dot ellipses here, so I'm trying to punch my monitor, and I'm just hurting my hand. I can't shatter the screen. <laughs> uh, but eating a donut is easy. So well, so we printed the right words on the donuts for you, so you can't mess this up. Save <laughs> Dave again. Says Dave Skinner. Chief Marketing Officer for Krispy Kreme Donuts in, I would say, a rare display of how these companies do, in fact, feel about your uh, their core customer base. Hey, dumb dumb, yeah. you know how you can't express how you feel good? We wrote DM me on a fucking donut so you can shove it in your gob and cry. Anyway, eat these. No one's going to sue us. We're invincible. <laughs> this year, uh, you can get uh, one of these for free. If you're a Krispy Kreme Rewards member, uh, you can get a free Conversation Heart Donut of choice with any purchase on Wednesday, February 6th. If you're not already a Rewards member, don't miss out. Sign up at HTTPS colon slash slash dot C-O-M slash A-C-C-O-U-N-T slash C-R-E-A-T-E dash A-C-C-O-U-N-T. So that is. I look forward to someone remixing that. That is the address to sign up for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they couldn't get a Bitly link going. Couldn't get a uh, Bitly going, and don't forget to show how you hashtag say it with donuts. 
this Valentine's season by tagging Krispy Kreme with a photo of your favorite Valentine's Day donut phrase. And then it doesn't say this, but I would say you want to definitely append the hashtag, hashtag say it with donuts. You know what uh, I like to say with donuts? What? Ooh. <laughs> and what <laughs> Piece of shit. I can't believe we shared genetic material. You made me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> you hate your guts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing I say with donuts is it's Saturday morning and I've given up. Those are the two yes. things that I've. This is my day. This is my day, I guess. I guess I'm putting me on this trajectory of the day. Uh, another question? Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you, Griffin. Thanks for reminding me of what we're here for. I hate getting haircuts for a lot of reasons, but the main one is I have no idea what level of enthusiasm I should be displaying while I get my haircut. I'm pretty awkward, so usually I don't talk with the hairdresser, meaning that I sit there in silence looking at my reflection, and it seems to me to have my resting, non-smiling expression. It seems mean. It seems mean, thank you to have my resting, non-smiling expression. I always feel like the hairdresser thinks I'm judging them, but then it feels even weirder to be smiling the whole time. Am I supposed to smirk? Should I close my eyes and pretend to be asleep? Please help. That's from anxious in the hair seat. You're deep in your own oh, feels. You're deep in Seems there, like. huh? You're deep in the pocket. You need to You need to pull up, my friend, pull up. We're all just in this thing together. You know, yeah. we're all just here together trying to work it out. I'm willing to bet money that the hairdresser is not looking at your face. They are autopiloting haircutting, a thing that they've done 20 times a day for the last X number of years. And they're like singing a song in their head or they're thinking about their grocery list or whatever. I think you're probably okay to make whatever face you're making. But yes, let me offer this. Come in with just a powerful scowl and like stay scowling, but close your eyes while they're cutting your hair and then open your eyes and let your face break into a smile and then reach up and like touch your own face. <laughs> like you can't imagine the feeling, <laughs> what is this? And then like hug them and begin to weep and then tip them 25%. Yeah, that's all, I mean, that's all excellent. Thank you, Travis. Um, I wanna, I wanna dwell on the um, I'm awkward so I don't talk. I think that part of that is just practice, my friends. It's, mm -hmm. you know, awkward just means I don't know what to say. So maybe start thinking of some things that might be good to say to somebody while they're cutting their hair. You know what I like to do? I like, I have different people cut my hair every single time. I used to go to my guy Sonny up at Master Cuts. Can't always get Sonny reliably. So now I'm a vagabond. I go where the wind takes me. Last time Ooh. I had my hair cut, it was in the basement of this hotel in Cincinnati when I was going to go to, uh, BB's birthday party. I got my hair cut at eight in the morning down in some basement of a hotel. I'm a, I, it's random for me. But you know what? I like to ask somebody, how did you get started cutting hair? Mm. So I'm curious. How long you been That's doing it? Good. How long you been doing it? Do you like doing it? And you know what? That's just letting somebody tell you their life story. You're going to learn a lot about the, the industry, the business. You're going to learn about them. I, I think asking... If, Asking questions, folks, yes. it is very rare that you're going to go wrong. Everybody, read your, you know, your, your, your Dale Carnegie. People want to talk about themselves. And if you are uncomfortable talking, then you're never going to go wrong. Just asking the person ab about their life. You're going to learn something. You're going to connect a little bit. It goes down smooth every time. I'm, let, I, let the fear make you the monster. The last time I had my hair cut is by a guy on Route 60 who had a little stand with a sign outside that said <laughs> cash only $12. And Justin, I, what are you what's yeah. your game? Are you okay? And I went and sat down and he spent I asked a couple of questions about this person and then he spent 30 minutes telling me the story, the grand tale of how his wife always wants to buy things that are too large for rooms and then pick paint that's too dark for the rooms to make them seem even smaller. And he is so tripped out about this that he spent half an hour walking me on a journey through his home, which I can now picture in perfect clarity. <laughs> and all the things in each room that are too large for the individual rooms. 
And uh, he actually told me that when he he hated the last color of paint so much that he asked the person to paint <laughs> that painted it to leave him his number because if his wife broke up with him, he was going to call them to have them come back and <laughs> paint it a different color because he hated it so much. It was a fucking great 30 minutes and I got a great haircut out of it. Okay, but please walk me through. You were driving past and you saw a sign that said cash only yeah, $12. Come and you on, were like, bud. screech, and pulled in. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I go- I was at Google Maps. I stopped at a stop sign and I typed barber into it. And I went to the closest place that was, a ra- that was there. Your game is that- so wild. Does that make you feel alive? Is that I, the point? I have two hairstyles cut and not <laughs> so the it is right. a binary it is a binary thing that is taking me from longer to shorter that is it that is those my, are my, uh, styles. my my go-to barber here in austin made the mistake of one of our first sort of sessions together mentioning pokemon she she talked about wrestling ah. uh yeah she mentioned a wrestling thing she had gone to around town it was and one of two like, things justin i thought that was po- well pokemon is basically animal wrestling so i'm i'm not yeah. too yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially with like a May Champ who's, you know, got that style or an Incineroar. Like that one's full. And that's 15 about. seconds. Sorry, Griff. There, Save it for next week. <laughs> uh, one last Yahoo to close it out. Wait, no, no, no. Do tell me about the wrestling. It's just you go, you're only allowed to talk well, she about made, She talked about wrestling. And now every time I go, you know, see her, I'm like, see any good wrestling lately? And But it, it was really just the one time. It's like how, like, when you're young and you mention in front of your grandparents that you, you are into dinosaurs because Jurassic Park just came out. And then for the next 25 years, you're getting dinosaur books, dinosaur bones, actual ones they stole from a museum. I, I hate, uh, I, Griffin, I'm, I feel really bad because I, that was the way that my brain completed that anecdote. And you told it with perfect efficiency. You only told the first yeah. 10 seconds because that's all you needed. The rest of it yeah. shook out exactly the way. I'm so sorry. Uh, I want to thank everybody for. Um, You're welcome. Oh, come on now, Trav. Come on, bud. Raz, ya. Another famous Travis Raz. Uh, yeah. I uh, want to thank everybody for listening to our show. Uh, if you want more stuff that we make go to McElroy m-c-e-l-r-o-y dot family and you can find all the shows we make all the zany videos oh um book books and most importantly for this uh particular vignette is uh tours um you can go on there and buy tickets to our next round of shows that are going to be Thursday, uh, February 7th in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, Sunday, February 10th in New Orleans at the Orpheum. We're going to be doing Mabim Bam at both of those. And both of those shows, the websites don't even say this yet, both of the shows are going to feature both Sawbones and Schmanners. Yeah. As it's opening a whole lot of shows. acts. It's a lot of show. And if you go to McElroy.family and click on Tours, then you can um, get tickets to those. Also, I, I believe there's a new Monster Factory out this week, and y'all, it's it's a good it's a good oh, one. No, I then we got to go. We got to do the other part of that that I have not done yet, but I will. Yeah. Um, uh, also, on on February 9th in New Orleans, we're doing the Adventure Zone. So you yes, get yes. for that as well. I, uh, I mean, we haven't sold a lot of tickets for those, and we're probably going to take a fucking bath on this one, folks. Come on out, <laughs> please. We're just so excited to come. We're visit. just super excited to come, but we also don't want this to be the only time we ever do because we're bankrupt because nobody came to our show. So please come to this show. In uh, I we knew that we didn't have a ton of listeners down there, but we what did we do? Why are we nagging ourselves? This show's gonna kick ass. <laughs> We're gonna sell no, all the tickets. Show's the gonna last kick day. ass. If oh. you fucking miss it, you're gonna be kicking your own when butt you, in your. When you put us in a corner, <laughs> when you don't, when we don't fill a room. We're, and we're desperate and hungry. That's when we put on the fucking best shows. Every, ask anybody. Ask Detroit. Ask any city in this great country. <laughs> don't don't ask. Detroit. Don't ask Detroit. <laughs> don't ask Detroit specifically. <laughs> McElroy family. Just get the fucking tickets, please, please. Yeah, I have uh, children. 
Thank you to John Roderick and The Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. Fantastic, fantastic album. Uh, thank you to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to Maximum Fun, check out all the great shows there. Shows like Switchblade Sisters and the Beef and Dairy Network. And uh, there's some, there's a bunch of new shows. The the JV Club with Janet Varney. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of shows there, all at MaximumFun.org that you should definitely go check out. Also, real quick, because we haven't mentioned it in a while, uh, the Adventure Zone graphic novel book two is coming out this summer, and you can pre-order that at theadventurezonecomic.com. Yeah, uh, should I tie it all up with a nice little ribbon? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, this final Yahoo that was sent in by Seth Carlson, the delivery man. Thank you. It's Yahoo Answers user Anonymous. I'm going to call them Joe asks, Ooh. The Sun? Is that sucker big or what? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. My, my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Is there a dog in a car at a bar on the street? Yay! I'm Allegra Ringo, a small dog owner. My dog Pistachio howls when she's excited. And I'm Renee Culvert, a big dog owner. My dog Tugboat tips over when he's sleepy. And we co-host a podcast called Can I Pet Your Dog that airs every Tuesday. We bring you all things dog. Yes, dog news, dog tech, dogs we met this week. We also have pretty famous guests on butt legs. We're not going to let them talk about their projects. No. Just want to hear about those dogs. We don't want to hear about your stuff, only your dogs. So join us every Tuesday on Max Fun. 